My name is Scott Whipperforth. I'm from Sauk City, Wisconsin, which is just north of Madison, Wisconsin. Um, and I'm currently living in Madison, Wisconsin. I'm uh, 29. Uh, so I got my undergrad in geology at University of Wisconsin Eau Claire and a PhD in I, technically geoscience or geology from University of Maryland. Um, I kind of bridge the gap in my research between say geochemistry and geophysics doing a lot of, uh, I guess, main topic was geoneutrinos, um, which is kind of nuclear physics related. Uh, I currently work in Madison remote um, as a data analyst for WPS Health Solutions. So I do data analysis. Um, I'd like to think that I do data science as well with uh, Medicare claims. So we are a insurance company, but we deal with Medicare, um, which is kind of fun and a, a big data experience, I guess. So my work is more flexible. So the company I work for, just to give some insight, is about 4,000 employees total. Um, a lot of people work from home, especially now, but even before the pandemic, there's a significant amount of people working from home. Um, so it's flexible, um, but probably less flexible than, say, like academics, where to some degree you can work whenever. Um, so I work usually 6.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. So I work 40 hours a week. Uh, so a typical day. Um, so our team is a data team, and we support uh, clinical staff, basically. Um, so a, a group of nurses and doctors, they review claims for Medicare and investigate, say, different providers. And they often give us requests for data or some sort of analysis on usually a certain provider, like a hospital or, or doctor. And we'll do some analysis on their claims to try and not necessarily find fraud, which would be, say, malicious by the provider, but uh, more abuse, where they're just kind of, they're billing wrongly or they're billing the wrong thing or something like that. Um, and then outside of that, there's some, like, I'd say more custom analyses that we can do just to, like, on our own time at work, try and find, uh, say, anomalous providers or hospitals and stuff like that. And so in my PhD, I enjoyed coding the most. And I enjoyed the data analysis aspect quite a bit. Um, of course, I did enjoy geoscience, but I did enjoy that aspect of it. And in my day-to-day -day job now, that is also what I enjoy. Um, I do like coding. I like problem solving. I like understanding and exploring data. Um, so that's certainly what I, I like doing. And I, I use like mainly Python, um, SQL. Um, I've dabbled in R a little bit. And so I, I do like that stuff. My undergrad was a lot of, I would say, petrology and like geochemistry focused. I did have a, a single geophysics class um, and that was pretty cool. We actually did uh, some field work, um, which was kind of neat at a super fun site. Um, and, you know, I think those kind of, those definitely influenced it. I, I like the, the petrology ones, especially when it was talking about like global tectonics and the mantle and stuff like that um versus like like there's like i took a hydrogeology hydrogeology course which is then you know focused on very practical near earth local kind of stuff i mean in grad school i had a course in geostatistics which i think influenced me quite a bit um and just my research itself really forced me to learn coding um and i think that helped a lot i didn't really have coding in my undergrad um which i think would have would have been nice actually that's the benefit of a geophysics program, I think, is uh, that kind of mathematical analysis of data. I think in undergrad, the only barriers really that I felt, I mean, were probably financial. Like, I do have student loans. I think I had the maximum that I could take out or that anyone could take out every year. Um, and right now, I still have $40,000 because it's not like I had a grad school salary. I was paying off my student loans. You know, through student loans, it wasn't. I, I never struggled that bad. And even in grad school, uh, like when you go to grad school you know, in geoscience, you get paid. So you're getting paid. Plus like the student loan amounts you can take is like actually pretty ridiculous. You can take a lot of money out if you need to. Um, I did not, but I, I did take probably five or $6,000 out of student loans during grad school. I mean, but from both undergrad and PhD, it's financially viable. I think you can get a job. Um, it's harder to get a job. It seems like if you're not in some sort of environmental field. I think my geographic restriction of wanting to live in Wisconsin and the Midwest, um, particularly Madison area, limited me quite a bit. Like I could have gotten a job 
I think at with the government or national labs or contractors in Washington DC where I basically do my PhD or other major cities on the coast but the Midwest has been a little more challenging. Uh, that said, I make $72,000 right now. Um, I started out at 66,000, which for Madison was the equivalent to the GS 11 grade, um, which I, from everything I've heard is the starting point for a PhD in the in government. So I felt okay with that. Um, I know other people that live in like the, the Minneapolis, um, who have undergrads in geology that are making less than that um, in doing geoscience. So just from that point, I, you know, even though I'm not in geoscience, my PhD seems to have helped me get a higher paying job. Um, in terms of what skills I had that I thought were applicable, I mean, I, I think even in grad school, you realize sometimes your strengths and how like you maybe have better skills or something than other people or more experienced rather. And so like, I knew I was good at coding. I knew I was good at data analysis. Um, I had, you know, I had more, certainly a lot more like geologic and geochemical experience than say, a, I would say an average geophysicist does, um, especially the geophysicists that come in with a physics degree and then uh, do geophysics. Um, so I think that was a benefit for me. Like I had that core geology experience, but I also then had a lot of experience with geophysics, a lot of different geophysics techniques, um, and a lot of coding. So I was kind of a jack of all trades person, which I know some people can frown on, but I think was actually a strength for me. I mean, I think it, I would, I do work for, I do work remote, but I do also work for a company that is in Madison. So that kind of helps too. Um, I think I feel supported in that, like, you know, my boss, especially is, and I think the company culture in general is very flexible. You know, if you're sick or you need to take an hour off for something, they're very flexible about stuff like that. Um, professional development, they're supportive. Um, so I think that is pretty good. I know, like, for example, we, we like put our pronouns in our emails and stuff like that. So I like they're pretty progressive with regard to stuff like that too, which is nice. Um, yeah, so I'd say I, I, in general, I feel supportive. Something I didn't do a good job with was considering maybe exactly what I wanted to do. I think I did have this idea of I wanted to go into some sort of academic field. Um, and then I did realize later on what my, my priorities were, which included like a geo, geolocation, I guess, or a location I wanted to work in. But uh, I think good advice would just be to try to really understand what those jobs are, like what they entail and like what skills you need for them. Because like, you could get a, like, I know people who have PhDs in like hydrogeology that do, you know, PhD level work at consulting companies um, and do cool stuff. Uh, so it's certainly, you know, I, 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 maybe I was too negative before, but there's certainly like applications of uh, PhD level work in industry. And even for geophysics, I, I would think there's, there's like, I know for my geophysics class, I took an undergrad, we did, uh, use a whole bunch of geophysics techniques at a super fun site to identify where the groundwater is going to be moving basically based on bedrock. Um, so I'm sure that's happening in the Midwest. Um, so I guess I probably haven't even now done enough research on what positions are available, what, uh, and what's, what's around there. So yeah, I think that's my main advice would give someone really try to understand what, what opportunities are actually out there and what skills you need, uh, for those.